Okay, Cat Lady, people have been asking for it. Let's get into it. Uh, let's get, we have, we're gonna have multiple days here on breaking points of Cat Lady conversations. First the male panel, then the female panel. So let's start <laughs> originally with the J.D. Vance original comments. They've been making the rounds. Jennifer Aniston's very upset. The weird label has now been made and it all traces back to this interview. Let's take a listen. Look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they wanna make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Ryan, this clip has uh, basically gone everywhere amongst uh, liberal women. Uh, it's uh, supposedly very animating. What do you make of this, I guess, in the context both of the Vance pick, but more broadly, the pickup of the attack uh, immediately after Kamala Harris became uh, the nom or I guess the presumptive nominee for the Democrats? The do you think it's going to be a problem broadly for Trump? What's your just reaction? I think, I mean, listen, Trump was shot two weeks ago and no one talks about it today. I think it depends on how long this news cycle lasts for it. Obviously, it wasn't a great rollout. Um, that being said, I don't think that it was the end-all, be-all rollout. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing about being weird is a, a different version of what Democrats have been saying about Trump for years, which is that um, he's not normal. I mean, I've had to hear not normal like a, for a decade at this point over and over and over again. Uh, but at the same exact time, I don't know how much of a kill shot they think this is um, among the base. At the end of the day, if, J if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, if, this t if their ticket improves among white men by two points from where it was or three points from where it was in 2020, he's going to an overwhelming landslide. It is that much of the margin. And of the women who are, um, uh, you know, women, we have a very different split electorate among men and women. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many women they would have one to begin with as terms of women who are so deeply offended by this that they won't vote for him. They might be deeply offended and they still vote for him, um, but I don't think that they are that deeply offended where they won't vote for him. Interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Michael, Michael do you so. think that um, it's kind of funny because the J.D. Vance pick comes at like the one moment when the Trump campaign really is riding highest, right? He just yeah. has survived this assassination attempt. We got the photo with the American flag and all this stuff. And and right in that moment, because of the assassination attempt, all of the chatter about we got to pull Joe, Bi Joe Biden off this ticket temporarily quieted so that people, myself included, thought, all right, Democrats are stuck with this dude. That's yeah. the context in which the J.D. pick J.D. Vance pick is made. Do you think, given this con this uh, comments and, and others that have been made, do you think that they regret that choice already? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, J.D. Vance was a self-gratification pick. Uh, hmm. No one really likes him but Don Jr. and Peter Thiel. Uh, and so, you know, I think especially after that audio came out, I'd be surprised if uh, Donald Trump is even talking to J.D. Vance. It's hard for me to believe that he would, you know, drop him from the ticket at this point. I don't even know if legally that could happen. Uh, but if he could, I think there would be real conversation about it because the problem with J.D. Vance is there is no real audience for him. Like people just don't like him. He comes off as mm. that guy who hangs around, who thinks he's smarter than everybody, who just like hangs out in his basement. In you know, as it, as he tries to double down on Trumpism, he lacks that kind of charisma that Trump has. You know, I don't like Trump, but there is a, a side of him, the way he talks, the way he kind of carries himself that, you know, you kind of laugh at. There's nothing to laugh when it comes to J.D. Vance. R Ryan, we'll get your reaction before we actually play what Trump himself had to say. He's got tremendous support. And he really does among a certain group of people, people that like families. I mean, you know, he made a statement having to do with families. That doesn't mean that people that aren't a member of a big and beautiful family with 400 children around and everything else, it doesn't mean that a person doesn't have, he's not against anything, but he, he loves family. It's very important to him. He grew up in a very interesting family situation and he feels family is good. And I don't think there's anything wrong in saying that. All right, Ryan, give us your react, both to what Michael said and to the Trump clip. Uh, yeah, Trump is just so funny. Um, I'm also <laughs> very sleep deprived and semi-delirious. So um, 
uh, when it comes to what Michael said, you know, the election is won and lost in the, in, the, in the Rust Belt. J.D. Vance is one of only two U.S. senators that are Republicans from the Rust Belt, I guess Indiana too, but of major states that are mm-hmm. electorally up for play, uh, one of two Republican senators. Uh, he is also a dynamo fundraiser who bring in tech money for uh, Donald Trump that was previously off the off the ticket. He is also, if you talk about age dynamic, he's our first millennial candidate. You know, that's a different kind of thing. Uh, his life experiences of what majorly affected him in life is the Iraq war, is the Wall Street dot com bubble. Uh, well, sorry, the real estate uh, uh, crash. Um, mm-hmm. Things that affected us, things that affected people like you, people like me. And the fastest growing group of people who are becoming Republicans are Gen Xers and older millennials. Um, and I think doubling down on that base is kind of very important. Yeah. You know, l- let me just say, though, I mean, yes, he's a senator in the Rust Belt. He underperformed mm-hmm. every other Republican who was running as the lowest favorability. I mean, what you're talking about is basically like identity politics, right? Like, yeah. oh, because they're from the same region and they, you know, share the same identity, they're going to vote for him. And I saw an interesting analysis, and I'm curious your your thoughts on this, Ryan, that the childless cat lady thing, if it was just that, okay, you're right, the news cycle's going to move on. It's going to be a, a blip that we all basically forget about, you know, very shortly. But It's indicative of a style that he picked up in order to both try to appeal to a MAGA base that was skeptical of him because his prior comments about Donald Trump. And also, I saw someone saying this online, which I thought was really interesting. You know, he wants to change some of the economic orthodoxy of the Republican Party, but he doesn't want to sound like a Democrat when he's arguing for something like the child tax credit. So instead of framing it like the way Trump does, like, oh, he just loves families, He's got to make it in this sort of like own the libs, aggressive, mm-hmm. off-putting way where it's not I support families. It's I hate people who don't have kids. So to me, that's the bigger problem with him is that he's adopted this like edgy online persona that is well suited to being a right wing online influencer, but is not particularly well suited to winning over a general election audience. Well, as someone who worked on the 2022 J.D. Vance Ohio Senate campaign, um, he was the only contender, as you said, he underperformed. He was the only contender against a serious opponent against Congressman Tim Ryan. Um, everyone else, I think the governor was running against a dog catcher from Columbus. So, it's, <laughs> And he was also the non, only non-incumbent. And so that's why how you get to a position where you are performing lower. Federal candidates are more competitive than state candidates are, especially against but incumbents. The, the place um, in, the, in the state that he performed the most poorly and underperformed the most was actually the Appalachian region where you would think he had the deepest ties. Right, but he overperformed in Cincinnati, which is the whole myth that he doesn't appear to appeal to city people or suburban people is also not true. Um, I think he even overperformed Trump in Cincinnati. Um, Hmm. But nevertheless, and yet still, the idea that um, he is trying to make this personality for himself that is not real. Remember, J.D. Vance was a literal celeb- literal, literal celebrity in the 2015. If he, he had a movie made after him with Oscar nominees and Oscar winners, uh, if he wanted to continue that route, it would have been a much easier place to always be the white Republican who hates white Republicans. This is not an act. This is who he is. Um, can he be a little simpler uh, on the campaign trail and speak in smaller sentences? Um, sure, but that's also what goes on with high IQ, very smart people, is they often talk too much. Um, I don't know that it's that, the length of the sentences that's the problem here, Ryan. I think that, I think that, yeah, no, I think it is. I think that it's overly intellectualized ideas. I think he'll get better over time. And once again, mm-hmm. This race is won and lost by people who have went through his life experiences. There is no other candidate in this race. Marco Rubio did not have the life experience of knowing what the fentanyl crisis was like. Uh, you know, the governor of North Dakota, or I forgot his name already, uh, Burton did not have the life experiences. Kamala Harris was living in Canada for portions of these things when she was being raised there you know, before she came back to accuse Joe Biden of racism. This is a different set of things. J.D. Vance speaks to certain voters' life, and they relate to him. And as much as everyone's talking about, you know, the cow, the 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 cow, uh, cat lady comments and all their stuff, the number one downloaded movie on Netflix all last week was Hillbilly Elegy. The number one bought book in the country was Hillbilly Elegy. People are genuinely interested in him. That is not being seen on Twitter all the time. Yeah, Another that's a good audience. point. So yeah. it's it's his uh, lived experience, in other words. Uh, 
Well, yeah, uh, what they it, always say that matters for for well, you know uh, BIPOC women is their lived experience. It matters for millennials too. <laughs> I do want to get your reaction to this, Michael, because Ryan is correctly identifying. Like if Kamala wants to play to win, she's going for 270 electoral votes. You're not going to go in some go big strategy. All the conversation before we get to the whole, you know, uh, Karens for Harris, mm-hmm. uh, white dudes for Harris, and all of that is, I think, correctly identifying that you actually do need to win uh, the white white men and female vote at the same margins he did last time. So then in the VP direction for Kamala, which way do you think she's going to go? Uh, is it one that, you know, as you said, tries to excite, you know, younger or uh, Latino or black voters, which obviously would be nice to have, but you really need white male voters in the Rust Belt. How do you think she's going to think about it in this context? Yeah, I think she's going to try to drive up some support among college educated men, but I think she's really going to try to drive up support among suburban women, among uh, young women, young educated women. You know, in you know, just anecdotally to the the cat lady comment, I, I talk to a lot of friends who um, have struggled to have kids. My wife and I, you know, we want to have a family one day, and we don't yet. And one of the things that really hit with that comment was just kind of the meanness of it, because mm. people really. It's hard to have kids. It's expensive. There's, you know, if you go through IVF, that's thirty, forty thousand dollars. And so, when you talk down to a lot of these people and their struggles, I think that really could resonate among, um, especially like suburban families, young families who are trying to get started, who already are having trouble buying new homes, and now they're trying to start families late in life, and they see people like J.D. Vance criticize them. It's something that among my wife and her friends, it's it's been a really big inflection point. So I think mm. that's something the Trump campaign should really worry about. Yeah, it's possible, uh, but it's not like your wife was ever going to vote for Trump anyways. Uh, so, Ryan, uh, that's any final thoughts, I think, from you, sir, uh, just on this general dynamic as it continues and uh, where you see that competition in the Rust Belt and with Kamala and her uh, VP pick that she might go in that direction. Uh, you know, I've it's, I've heard all the names everyone else heard, Shapiro, Kelly. I probably mm-hmm. would say, my I guess, and I don't have much in, insight, but I think it's probably be Kelly if I had to guess. Uh, hmm. um, but Shapiro, you know, Shapiro has been making a fight for it. Kelly's been spending a lot of money for it. Um, so we'll see. Um, and it's going to come down to, you know, those major three swing states. I've not seen any evidence that the Rust Belt's in, sorry, the Sun Belt's in serious play outside of, of where it's been. And, um, well, you know, we'll see. We'll see a lot of people, a lot of people from uh, a, a political activist wanting to register a new house in Pennsylvania over the next couple months. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show, help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.